All right, yeah. Uh, welcome to Poets Out Loud Make Speak Easy Online. Um, we'll crack on. Um, this one is called uh, 6th of August 1945. And it um, goes like this. Flash of light, brighter than the sun. People vanish quicker than the blink of an eye. Shadows, ghostly silhouettes scorched into pavements, stone, brick walls. A raging blast knocks people to the ground like dried leaves in a sudden torrent of high wind, appearing as if from nowhere. Streets of fire and demolition replace buildings and roads. Staggering, zombie-like, wounded, fall about dazed. Utter destruction. Barracks, schools, houses are razed. A new weapon of war. Crowned by an enormous plume, the shape of a fungi. Dropped by an enemy. Unsure how many would die. Skin and flesh burned. Others slashed by missiles of glass. Day turned to nighttime by this nightmarish blast. Struggle for survival begins. A quest for water to quench one's thirst. Raindrops fall from the sky. Prayers have been answered. But these thick black droplets of rain, stained with the colour of soot, harboured another unseen danger of radiation, a poison invisible but so very quick in continuing to strike against the enemy. Fatigue followed by blisters and rings of purple and maroon, ending in crimson blood coughed out of the lungs and seeping from nostrils, ears, lips and eye sockets. A split second that forever changed humankind where was the humanity in war? A nation prepared to fight to the very last, who had no qualms about launching their own surprise attack. This decision was taken after offers to accept a surrender were ignored. Truman was given no room to maneuver, reeling from the shock, both literal and political. No white flag was flown. Determination and resolve was shown from the people of honor in the face of such power. A second display of this atomic force might seem unnecessarily cruel, but not all is fair in love and war. And capitulation soon came, disarming the nation. Would have been a humiliation but to be then rebuilt and assisted by the aggressors and moved to require no need for armed forces. The white flag would fly the blood red circle at its heart. Let us never forget this day was the start. Time will be measured from before this moment and ever after, ever after. In the desert of Utah, at an unholy trinity, after the one and only test of this weapon of assured destruction, with such force as to melt the desert sands to glass, Oppenheimer reflected upon the project's result and quoted the words from an Eastern mythology of another time and place. Now I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. And that's that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it says it all really, 75 years. Yeah, very powerful stuff that, Phil. Yeah, I saw this uh, extraordinary... Um, like VE Day, wasn't it, or something? Image. VJ Day, yeah, uh, victory yeah, in right. Japan, yeah. yeah. And uh, I saw this amazing documentary where they sort of reconstructed some of the... Uh, build up to the Hiroshima attack and the aftermath and stuff and it was just 
Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, Phil, it was part of America's program of trying to annihilate the Japanese people to some extent. Because in March, yeah. there was the firebomb attack in Tokyo. Yeah. Which in some ways was equally as horrendous. Wasn't even testing a weapon. They knew exactly what it would do. Yeah. 100,000 dead and 125,000 injured. It's just, it's, it's horrendous, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth remembering these things. Hopefully they won't happen again. But, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Something like Beirut go up, uh, which is incompetence to the government. I mean, that's... Uh, well, I know. I mean, and it was staggering. I mean, it was in the same week, the 75th anniversary of Hiroshima, yeah, yeah. when that happened. I mean, it's extraordinary. Mm. Anyway, uh, Ali, do you have something to <laughs> follow, follow up? Yeah, I, I do. Um, yeah, so thanks for that, Phil. That was very poignant. Yeah, it's, you've got to remember these things for sure. Uh, so this is a sort of uh, another quirky poem. Ali's Apothecary. I lay my vitamin emporium on the table. Rows of bottles, brown, green, blue. Traditional pharmacy colours, promising health, vitality, long life and happiness. All in plastic, hopefully recyclable. K2 mountains of menaquinine, B12, D3, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, vegan multivits. No trumped in dental or bleach, thank you very much. I scoff them all and more, my body transforms. Bones calcify into coral-like structures. Eyes glaze like gelatinous capsules. My blood, metallic, super bright. An enhanced supplement superwoman ready for battle. Primed, buzzed, alert, alert, stay alert. I take a sip of green tea and remind myself to breathe calmly. Over and out. Thank that you. was great. Fantastic. Who knew green tea was that good for you? <laughs> Fantastic. George, what have you got for us? Right. I was thinking I should maybe do something cheery, but I had this looked out, and funnily enough, it makes reference to VE Day, funnily enough. But this is for all Jock Tamsin's bairns. The chip vine comes on Sunday, stirring hunger with his chimes. I hum the tune, words in my head. Hooray, hooray, I wish I was in Dixie. A dark thought cloud clouds the view. Sorry, a dark thought clouds the, the blue. Have I become racist and renegade? Yesterday I ranted at a flag waving island. As like the TARDIS, it slipped back in time painted a red, white, and blue myth of happiness. In truth, it was no happy land. It was pay for the doctor, work till you drop, whistle in an outside lobby. I hope no one in the neighborhood, hearing this snatch of chippy tune, fears we have become American bigots, smells the vinegar breath of hate. In the bombast of VE Day, I turned to Hamish Henderson, Elegies for the dead in Cyrenaica. Now it is to his song of hope, freedom come all ye. Good, yeah, very powerful stuff there as well. Yeah. It's certainly because it plays the battle th theme of the Republic. When it comes right, uh, you know, the Confederates, uh, I wish I was in Dixie, which is, of course, the, the war tune of the Confederacy. And I realised that there's a, a nice uh, family of Afro-Caribbean background. I don't know exactly what. I see them passing in the top and they're lovely. And this chip van stops right outside their door and plays the tune. And I thought, well, actually, here we don't think of it like that. But if you've been watching the Black Lives Matter, the response to a lot of that is the folk waving the Confederate flag and playing the battle hymn of the Republic. Yeah, uh, it's. I think it's it's good that people have woken up to these sort of insensitive acts, isn't it? I think that mm -hmm. it can only be uh, better for people. As a, as a community as a whole, I think. 
Uh, Hilary, have you got something to share with us? Yes, I have. And I have to say, this is such a good spur to get something done because I didn't have anything yesterday. But um, I'm, I'm in the middle, I started writing a sort of biography of my father who died 15 years ago, because when he died, I realized, we realized that the grandchildren didn't know anything about him at all. So I've been doing, I finally got round to it in lockdown, of course. Um, and, but doing this, my father's story has of course meant going into other people's stories and my grandfather's story. So this is actually written from my grandfather who died in 1932, um, aged only 42 and leaving behind a wife and six children. And although he'd been in the army all his life, he'd actually served his army term. So officially he was a civilian when he died and he didn't get any army pension or anything. So they had nothing. So anyway, this is from my grandfather. <clears throat> um, 88 years ago, you died at only 42. That long ago, you left a darling wife and six loved small children, all bereft. I can almost make the loss of you real right now. The slow, grinding, drawn out dying of you has sent shockwaves through the families you engendered. Waves that juddered through young hearts and bones of your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. The ripple effect goes on in us who didn't know you. Such a kingpin you were and should have been. Once withdrawn, the edifice that you'd built on love, good humour and a living wage came tumbling, all smashed down. It was a Wiltshire peacetime did for you. Guardian angels that got you through Gallipoli, the Somme, deserted you on your native plain. Did mustard gas on the Western Front take that long, a quarter century, to seep its way through your lungs? We've wondered, because we always look for answers. Whatever, we have ephemera of you in black and white, tiny photographs that show you laughing Long, crack-shot eyes, smiling, shaded by the peak of your cap. You sit in uniform, cross-legged on the grass. Bundled into your lap and embraced are two small children, all fat-legged, baggy-knitted knickers, relaxed against your chest. You're laughing because their mother, who you love, is behind the camera and because you're thankful that you have them all, you live. But come seven years and you are dying, leaving, could you have known, a legacy of disaster. I bet she said she'd manage, they'd be fine. Your army friends would say they'd see her right. You want to know your family didn't get a thing. It was the 30s. King and country shook their heads. And so your darlings had their own slow hunger march. Oh, they survived. The kids, all clever. But damage was done. The missing you, never replaced by hopeless men or making money. The negative, the not you, the shadowed imprint that you left, it got them one by one. Their mother first, then down they went like nine pins, like bottles on the wall. The x-ray pinned to the doctor's wall, the sad explaining that now there is no more that can be done. All there in black and white, shadow spots where there should be none. They didn't dodge, dodge the bullet, though some had more time. The care home, learning to scrub floors, your prettiest went through that. Lost children looking for a hand to hold, 
a breast to lay their head upon. Your oldest girl went mad for the GI's easy ways, their gifts of lucky strike, stockings, compliments, and touch. The street shunned her as a tart. She fled abroad. New Zealand was as far as she could run, taking with her there the memories of you that only she had not been too young to hoard. I wish I'd known you, you, my grandfather, and that my father had known you too. How loss pulses down the line, till suddenly the chest will heave, the breath will catch, and heart heavy, we still grieve. Wow. Yeah, it's it's amazing when mm? it's amazing when you start to look into sort of family history and you discover I know. stories Absolutely. and you think these people were at these turning points in, in history and, and stuff. It's but also how grief gets really, really repressed in one yeah. in one generation. And I think it comes out in the next one. It can't, you know, it has to come out somewhere, you know, really. Anyway. That's, that's my grandfather. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Richard, uh, what have you got? I've got, I've got, a, well, I noticed the other day on the news, it was the uh, second anniversary of the bridge in Genoa that collapsed, if you remember. It was called the Mirandi Viaduct, I believe. And they've just rebuilt and opened it in the last few weeks got a new designer to put it up. So I've written this poem called In the Shadow of the Bridge, and it's about the events of that particular time. We lived in the shadow of the Mirandi Bridge for over 50 years, standing high in the town. But then one dreadful day in the valley below with an almighty crash, it all came raining down. This mighty viaduct, crossing the railway track, four roads and a river, gateway to the city. 43 now lay dead among the concrete blocks and twisted mangled cars, no remorse or pity. It has taken two years, cost millions of euros, to both, both design and build. Still, no one takes the blame. Now once more it rises majestic in the sky and life goes on again though it is not the same. This one we hope will last, strong for centuries or more. A castle in the sky, and now no thought of dread. Again we're in the shadow, though it's not so dark now. A fitting reminder to the living and the dead. That's it. Thank you, thank you. Just got me thinking about things. Uh, yeah. Uh, put pen to paper and came up with that. Well, I finished it off today, actually. I did a few other bits in it just to round it off. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Janet, you got? Uh... Yeah. Um, got one here. It was inspired after our kind of neighbourhood get together after we. BE day this year, a bit of a lockdown neighborhood party. Um, and it's called Victory in Europe, and Victory in Europe in, in the title ends with a question mark. On 8th of May 1945, a military surrender ended a war the day before. So they gathered, they danced, they sang, and children waved flags in the rubble under stars that brought freedom. On 8th of May 2020, a country locked down in war against virus, still gathered, remembered, still grateful. Neighbours apart, now together, alone, from the stars on the flag that brought freedom. Good, good, good. Uh, Josephine. 
Hello. Um, oh. During the lockdown, um, I was unable to play uh, the bells in the parish church of St Augustine's in Alston, as I normally would on a Sunday morning. And so um, I was asked to write a piece for um, a magazine that the churches on Alston Moor bring out every month. It's a really well produced magazine and it's a real achievement that they do this every month with a different um, uh, theme. So um, I wrote this poem in response. Resonance. The physics of bells is that of the virion. Earth speaks through their voice beyond the human. If a stone could speak, said Galway, but it does speak. Born of stars, returning to stars. We are the wind blown in the trees, the air of the waiting valley. We trust live in the resonance. Living is more than knowing. A vine stands, a metal vine. Clusters dangle above, ready for picking. The metal canes, ten, stretch, tend, tender, tentative, attentive. In the tent of Moses and of Abraham, with the Ten Commandments, their head in a metal cage, their eight arms and two cordons arranged as a keyboard, a key. What is inside? What is outside the window? The room is where she has control. So little, only ten notes, not even sure of the tuning. The room, womb, stanza, where a note just dates. A room from which the note will venture. A journey with no plan, no idea. Living is more than knowing. Up and down the 49 steps, hard red hat on a chair blocking the top flight. She catches a glimpse of movement. A chair, a cupboard, an unlit fire, the key in the door, the wedge, the light switch, dark stairwell, two flights, two doors, to a store, then a room with a long low table, two narrow windows ahead, with cobweb diamond panes, a latch door, a light switch, in the dark. The quiet, the call, the dust. Funeral cards on a plinth. Living is more than knowing. Vulnerable, limited, in the place of the Trinity, a bird raises its feeble wings, hesitates before taking the food. The angel marking time since the Ice Age. The one that reaches above and below, out of ten, the Angelus bell. Cross bell enjoins to gladden hearts with prosperity, wisdom, love, beauty, well-being, sadness as well. The seasons sound, the year, the perceptible, the 2020 frequencies, the lockdown, the return to the shepherd who put them here in the pristine meadow. It started with friendship, camaraderie, laughter in the spire, dancing, singing in the street, must dancing, no knowing what to play next, the limits of agency in the dark, not knowing where it goes, how she will trip up, we carry on, we trust, live in the energy. Living is more than knowing.
Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, we've got about three and a half minutes, but that's probably enough time to get a couple more bits and pieces in. Uh, Kelly, have you got one for us? Okay. Um, I thought there would be a lot of poems about the stormy weather we've had recently because it was so dramatic, at least it, it was in Maryport, I don't know about in other places. Um, I went for a walk um, the afternoon of the, the really major storm, you know, the lightning and everything, and I wrote, I thought I'd have a go at a villanelle just trying to capture the atmosphere before the storm. So here it is. <clears throat> Before the storm. Clouds are swollen with rain yet to fall. Air is cloying and heavy as stone. Sea and sky merge in a dark grey pall. The birds all cower, forget to call. A strangeness reaches down to the bone. Clouds are swollen with rain yet to fall. Distant trees are a child's scrawl. The wind begins to moan and groan. Sea and sky merge in a dark grey pall. The, di the dry grass quivers, held in thrall. Stalks bow down, broken, wind blown. Clouds are swollen with rain yet to fall. The air is close as a woolen shawl, hiding a threat that's still unknown. Sea and sky merge in a dark grey pall. Time, it seems, has slowed to a crawl. The frightened birds are all long gone. Clouds are swollen with rain yet to fall. Sea and sky merge in a dark grey pall. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. It was extraordinary. You literally couldn't see where the sea met the sky. It was just a greyness all over. <laughs> yeah. Very uh, evocative of the, the, the night, wasn't it? It was really quite something. Yeah. Almost two hours of non stop lightning. It was just. Continually flashing everywhere. Yeah. Amazing. amazing, yeah, frightening and exciting at the same well, time. <laughs> an extraordinary power of nature, uh, and it also was was strange because usually you get a rumble of thunder and then you wait a few seconds and the lightning follows, but it seemed to be out of sync with each other, and and it, it was like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've been here in Carlisle. I looked out the window and, and I, I saw three bits of forked lightning go down. I don't know whether it struck the River Eden or, or where it was going, but there was sort of sheets of lightning going off all sorts of different colours and then bits of forked lightning as well. I mean, it's quite remarkable. And as you say, it went on for hours and hours. Mm. And, 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 and my friend outside, who lives just outside of Edinburgh, uh, across the road from him, a house was hit with lightning and within an hour it was burnt. It. You're on the whiskey, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just, just water. <laughs> uh, okay. It could be I'll June, I that. suppose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Hi, Finola. Hiya. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> we can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, maybe that's the best. No. Yeah. Oh. oh, God. <laughs> Good to see you. We've, we've just sort of completed the first round, but if you've got anything to hand, would you like to share it with us, Finola? I do. Two little ones. Oh, well, you, we, 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 we're, we're still going around doing one each at a time. And right. Then going that's, the that's, perfect. that's perfect. That's um, perfect. I'm going to do a wet one because it's so hot. Um, this. <laughs> This is about the Wadden Sea, which is in the Netherlands, right at the very top. And it's a bit like, if you can imagine, Morecambe Bay, um, which is very dangerous to walk across, but if you know the secret path, you can, right? So this is walk on the wild side. 
<laughs> this is no sea. Here, folk are Sunday strollers, lugworm squishers, periwinkle prodders. My sea batters and beats, ravages coasts, gouges caves, rips cliffs, beaches selkies, press gangs locals. This, this is a polished pond, a made up mirror of mercury, mud and shifting wetland, of gullies and salt marshes. When the brackish mire deepens, the weak ride tractors back as curlews unfurl and flee and seals pass judgment on this soft lipped coast. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we might just shake things up and go in reverse order. Um, so I guess that means, Fanola, if you've got your second one to hand, <laughs> you can read it. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just keep giving right, you right, okay. tonight. Okay. Um, and this is a sort of C one as well. Um, using Dad's binoculars. Hefting his knowledge in their weight, I note beak shapes, flight patterns, Scan bird sketchings in tidal mud. Listen, the air is swollen with song, but I know identification is often luck. A beginner again, in shifting light, I observe the whirling acrobats, their glitter back gloss, smell the breath of garrulous gulls. Always, I try to master the accumulation of wings. Yep. That's me. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. Excellent. Okay, we're back to Kelly then, if you've got that one uh, for us. Hi, yes, uh, I, I've got another slightly weather related one and I, I just have to explain a little about it. Um, it's about uh, Chopin and George Sand who stayed in a monastery called Val de Mosa on, in Mallorca, I think. Um, they, were, they were having an affair and they were trying to get away from the scandal in Paris and Chopin's health was very bad. He was, this was when he discovered he had TB. So this sort of lover's retreat turned into something very unhappy, really. Um, but I was listening to the Raindrop Prelude, which is so beautiful, and he wrote it there. Um, and apparently, well, I've, I've just tried to imagine what it was like, really. Um, so here we are. Valdemosa, the howling wind and the drumming rain, the hacking cough that kept him awake, the scratching of her pen at night, the children's voices in stone corridors. Maurice, Solange, Maman, Maman. The love and pain he poured into the notes he wrote the melodies that trickled through fingers onto ivory keys, beginning with gentle chimes, then deeper, darker chords with massing storm clouds, raindrops quickening like the pulse in his head until at last the music ended. In the trembling light of day, drops glistened on leaves, Frédéric and Aurore, exhausted, sipped bitter coffee, picked at stale breakfast pastries, wished it could be as before. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Josephine, do you have another one for us? Okay. Uh, I I have got one here. Um, it's called um, Two Faces. 
of water in time of COVID-19. The river speaks her name, sparkles with intelligence. Her voice is big. She opens, listens, bursts infinite sounds running deep. Her shining hand lifts rocks. Her eyes know. She spreads, receives, groins anew her course. Drains ancient beds, falls as snow, pounds copper. Her head is a rainbow. She is priestess of under earth. Hands and feet move in ritual. Teeth and heart voice its name. She asks, where do you hurt? I hurt in the top of my head. Abu, god of plants, be born from your head. This is the year, the year of numbers. We are the ones ruled by statistics, constantly watching. He slipped through our fingers, a hydrating slither, baptised his anointed, pronounced him leader. And the place of the golden infant's conception, classified sacred. Great stuff. Uh, it's going backwards, it's confusing me. Um, Jeanette, we're with you. Okay, I've got a light-hearted one. Um, quite a Brian Bilston fan, followed him on Twitter for a few years, got his first book and then found out he was coming to Carlisle last year. So I took the afternoon off work to go and meet him and I was a bit, ah! So this is my uh, little poem about that afternoon. Um, it's called On Meeting Brian Bilston. I travelled by afternoon train, taking the last bus home, to find you, a Banksy-like poet, your diary well worth the roam. I wondered, would you smoke a pipe, as I journeyed in, in anticipation, to carpe diems and duffel coat, would I emit adulation? Meeting you there in bookends, no Morrissey quiff in view, I knew you deserved every retweet. And I think it was really you. So. Thank you. Sounds like it's one of those uh, good occasions where you meet your heroes and it turns out to be a good thing. Because I always say, don't meet your heroes. <laughs> it's always a, a dangerous thing. Don't shatter the illusion. Yeah. It was really, really lovely. But beforehand, I'd um, nip to the sands toilets just to kind of tidy myself with him. But I'd leant over the sink with my handbag and the tap had still been running. So I was out there with a handbag that's half full of water. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, dear. There's always something when you're trying to make a good impression like that. And, oh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Great stuff. Uh, Richard, you've got another one for us. Uh, yes, I have. I've got unreserved. I'm only going to do one. Um, this is something my mother used to say when she didn't like somebody was, you're neither use nor ornament. And it took me a while. She used to say that a long time ago, but it's taken me a while to find enough rhymes for ornament. So um, she didn't say diplomacy is the ability to tell a person to go to hell in such a manner they actually look forward to the journey but anyway she did say you're neither use nor ornament you're neither use nor ornament you've got no part to play you're no good in the tournament your luck has drained away you wonder where the corner went in a circular room you're neither use nor ornament and we're all plotting your doom you're neither use nor ornament my mother used to state You'll always need a warmer tent while camping by the gate. You may wonder what Norma meant. Talking the other day, you're neither use nor ornament, and that's the way you'll stay. Thought I'd lighten the mood a bit anyway, there we go. Uh, 
fantastic. The, the somber stuff about VJ Day and grandparents that we hardly ever knew and stuff. It's uh, good stuff, but got to bring a smile. <laughs> yeah, some good rhymes in there. Nolan, you're right on it there, absolutely. I'll tell you who's in a warm tent at the moment. It's uh, one Susan Cartwright-Smith who's on holiday with the family down at Oxenholm in the campsite. So uh, I imagine it'd be uh, stuffy in there. No fun at all. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. George, do you have another? Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh. I've, got, I've got millions, but I mean, well, <laughs> hi Kelly. Sorry, this sort of put me in. I haven't read this for so long. I just dug it out there. I always rather partial to this, but you shouldn't be partial to one of your own poems, should you? There ain't no lone ranger. See, Tonto, you liar. There ain't no lone ranger. There ain't no lone ranger you see, no man on a white horse with bullets of silver. No William tell music in times of danger. There ain't no one riding for me. See, Tonto, you liar. There ain't no lone ranger. No hearty hi-ho, no black mass stranger. No, with one leap he was free. No man on a white horse with bullets of silver. No edge of the seat with heart all equipper. Despite childhood memory, See, Tonto, you liar. There ain't no lone ranger. In real life, the evil is often the winner. The bad guys claim victory. No man on a white horse with bullets of silver. The mask has slipped and the face is a glimmer. The ghost of Kimo Sabi. See, Tonto, you liar. There ain't no lone ranger. No man on a white horse with bullets of silver. Yeah, wow, that's uh, that's good. It reminds me of a story. I think it was um, when he was a little boy. Nick Pemberton met the Lone Ranger, I think, in, yeah. in Manchester. I think in a hotel in Manchester, and he was like, "Funny little boy," but he—I don't think he quite was able to compute that it was this hero of the of the TV of the or the mm -hmm. the serials, you know, the the, uh, uh, the, the cinema serials. And it was like, it's just a guy yeah. in a hotel. <laughs> I love that when they, when they brought Roy Rogers and Trigger to Glasgow, they gave the horse a room in the Glasgow Central Hotel and they had film of, they had pictures of him, the horse been taken up the grand staircase in Glasgow Central. I mean, it was a fake, but I mean, they brought the horse into the hotel and led it up the staircase as though they were taking it up to one of the bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Great stuff. Uh, Ali. Have you got another for us? Cool. Yep. Rusty shears. Long glass fragments impale my back. A distorted dragonfly, surreal obsidian. Moon glistened crimson drips onto white feet. Heavily scented tea roses bloom where I pass. The object tree appears, crown festooned with comb, hammer, bracelet. Spoon, anything you can imagine. I choose a pair of rusty shears, cut out my heart, hang it on the topmost branch. Ebony glass, frosted eyes, alabaster skin. Come closer now, you can put your hands right through me. I will not blink. Good stuff. All right, yeah. Poet master signing in. Oh, it's that. See, I told you, a warmish tent. This is this is amazing, isn't it? The technology to to to. Oh, getting technical help there. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. How's I'm it going? I'm not sure I know how to mute it on this. Harry, you'll have to come help me how to mute as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've not seen it on the phone before. It's your Why, phone. what do you want to do? Mute, I guess. <laughs> there, okay. This is performance art. Did you have anything you wanted to read? 
You're not sure. OK, well, I'll read one because we've gone in reverse order this time. And then if you can get one, then you can read one. Does that sound OK, Susan? OK, as we've already said, Kelly mentioned and, and, and we've said there was some interesting weather the other day. And uh, this is my sort of interpretation of it. It's called uh, lightning in the bucket. And it goes something like this. Jagged spectral claw reaches down in a flickering instant from the thunderous murky heavens. Pink, blue, white, light, illuminating fractions of night. Electrical discharge crackles a path to darkened earth or ink black surface water, spreading the unseen charge in a headlong dash, a crash and a flash. Through Thievery by Prometheus, or your choice of ancient or modern myth for each prevails, the privilege of the gods guarded with responsibility, a great power needed by our age of machines, little boxes of light, tablets of knowledge that require a charge to capture the ethereal fractaline ghosts and make Adam and our Apple tech alive. Without which would we survive? We found a way, a thing of magic. We learned the forbidden knowledge and worked out how to capture lightning in the bottle. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, over to you, Poet Master. Do you have, do you have one there, Susan? Yes, I, I could read one, but I've read it before on, uh, possibly on Speakeasy, I think. Um, but I've only got my phone with me, so I don't have any, my back catalogue, as it were. Um, you don't go so, on holiday with your entire back catalogue. I mean, pff, you're the Poet I'm Master. Um, okay, so, this is called Wishes. Thistle wishes weigh heavier than dandelions, though time is ticking, and it takes a breath already taken away for the down to rise up. I see this world waking, stretching, aging. I notice change, like a cooing grandmother remarking on the unremarkable, inevitable growth of child to man. All ages show on the spiny stems confused by climactic shifts and switches, punkish purple, aged sepia and all stages in between. Tomorrow, the aged grizzled heads will be no more, heavy hopes in search of legacy, wishing on the wind to prolong memories. <laughs> Thank you. Good stuff. And you didn't go into the robot voice either. <laughs> um, I, I have to go now, but thank you so much to everyone. I've really enjoyed the, the poems I've heard tonight. Um, Hilary, I loved yours. You weren't here when I was saying that, but your family history was just so moving. You took us on such a journey. Um, so anyway, I've got to go, but hope to see you all again soon. Bye, Kelly. <laughs> Bye, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Kelly. Uh, I'm okay. heading off to you now, Fox. No I've got an early start for a hike tomorrow. <laughs> oh, where are you going? Um, up Blencathra, but only if it's not thundery. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Um, if not, we might go to Boskill's Tarn to go swimming. I've never been there, so yeah. It's lovely. There. But hopefully, it won't thunder. Rubs up above your head. That'll be good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> in the tarn, yeah. it's really nice. It's really nice. Very good. Is it? Watch out. Yes, it's lovely. Watch out for the fish. <laughs> yeah, it'll talk to you. Electric uh, yeah. Enjoy. Uh, Thank you. Poem about it. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye bye. Good to see you. Take care. Bye bye. bye. This one, Can I just uh, say that Harry filled the details in? I'm not calling myself a poet master. That was Harry's choice. I don't believe you. <laughs> That's cool. It's very cool. Like it. Good stuff. Uh, okay.
This one's um, called mist. Because something like this. An indeterminate haze hangs lazily in the air. Sharp, jagged hills, softened by unusually tranquil sunlight. Silver-grey bundles of cotton wool sit atop the high-sided valley. Thick leather tread makes contact with stone chippings. Footsteps lead into an ancient land, forged by glaciers, shifting millennia ago. And sure enough, tumbling clouds of swirling vapour descend, tripping up and over, rippling out like horses untamed, wanting to break on an absent shore. And the tops disappear in a fuzzy smudge. The fine line between sky and earth is stolen away, lost in the between world of those things found and those things missing. Continuing into the oblivion of moisture droplets that hang in the air, suspended in time, as if acted upon by incantations. The steep formations are now gone, enveloped in the ever-shifting daydream world of gunmetal grey. Visibility reduced to yards, then feet, and you can nearly not see your hand in front of your face. A real pea super, thickest fog. No wonder people can easily get lost. Suddenly, a gap in the cloud. A small patch of hazy clear sky makes itself known. A touch of the sun's warm gaze, and the patch of blue grows. The cloud rolls on its way. The peaks reappear, and the trail ahead becomes clear. The route is before you. This is the way we must go. Tread the track and follow the path. The opportunity to continue should surely be taken. No time to resist. This chance of good fortune is not to be missed. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, George, we're back to you. Right, thanks, Bill. Uh, I thought I'd maybe take us back to a time before lockdown. Waitress. That endless smile of youth opens her approach. Ordering coffee becomes joyous. Cake not a temptation, a celebration. Sliced reminder of when every day was a future, every experience to be stored. She has dusted out our dry corridors, our linen sparkles. Have a nice day, possible. Thanks. Can I just mention, Phil, these we Dreek, nice little Scottish publisher. Keep an mm -hmm. eye open. They've got a number of really nice pamphlets and things, and they also put out call-outs occasionally for work, etc. So it's an interesting place. Oh, do you know where they're based? Are they just... Uh, sorry, wait a minute. Uh, in the ether. <laughs> Actually, if you're on Facebook, if you, you'll find them on Facebook under Dreek Magazine, D R E I C H, in case you're not used to the Scottish strange. Uh, where are they based? Uh, Finola, do you know where they're based? No, they're in Scotland. Just, Scotland, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> just wondered, I just wondered. Cool. Good stuff. Can I just say one of the lovely things about them is? is they give you, they not only give you contributors copies, they give you lots of copies. <laughs> if, you, if you've got three poems in the magazine, they give you three copies. Oh, right? okay, yeah. And I must admit, I'm getting a wee bit teed off with being told, yes, we'll, we're delighted to take your um, poem, but, uh, and, and we're going to give you the privilege of buying it cheaply, uh, the magazine. And you're like, no, you've got my poem. Um, obviously online, you know that it's online, but when it's in a hard print and they expect you to buy a contributor's copy, I think it's just totally taking the piss. Mm. So, um, so Dreek is wonderful because they give you lots of copies really nicely and it's a very good quality thing. 
Well, we try to, we, we um, our mantra is to give every contributor a copy in the, the magazines that Cold You Press, you know, produce the right. images that we do. And then, yeah. And then you can buy any, you know, additional ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, buy them afterwards, buy, yeah. buy more copies, but get a copy, you know. Yeah, it, uh, uh, you know. It, it's like payment for, for sending it in, isn't it? Exactly. And exactly. that's our view on it. Yes, yes. Yeah, but Thank there's you. those magazines now that are asking you to pay a fee for them to read your yeah. poem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's, it's, it's that line between... Yeah, I, between I mean, I understand there's different things that are happening. Anyway, just a wee plug for Dreek. They're a nice little publisher. Cool. Okie dokie. Um, Richard, have you got another... Yes, yeah, so I've got one called Eternal Youth, and it, it basically nobody wants to get old and decrepit. Getting older isn't the problem; it's what it does to you. As people, <laughs> however, ha ha hand, turning back the hands of time isn't easy, and some of us do age better than others. It's better to be fat and ugly, I think, because you won't lose your looks as you get older. But um, the thing we all have in common is we age twenty-four hours a day. Anyway, this is called Eternal Youth. Uh, all the beautiful folk have so much more to lose. This growing olds is no joke. You have the right to choose. As character lines your face and flesh is loosely hung, just grow old with good grace or die eternally young. We all want to stay young. Okay. The aging pros stung and we always ask why. We go through life gaily, never think of demise, but we all age daily, and that comes as no surprise. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. None of us are as young as we used to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> and tomorrow you'll be 24 hours older <laughs> at this time. Cool. Um, hello, Fernando Smith. Cool. We've got about um, seven minutes or so before we do the time warp, but we'll uh, we'll rock on. Um, Jeanette, have you got another one for us? I have, and tomorrow our eldest gets a real level of results, uh. so <laughs> we don't really know what's happening there. Hopefully, all will go well, um, and she'll be going off to uni. But I wrote this poem a couple of years ago when the girls were getting bigger and it's called Weather Protection. I tried to protect, kept your dragon dust drizzle, shaded you from sunlight, but sometimes unexpected winds blew from all directions. My spokes weren't strong enough. I slipped hold of the handle. The canopy folded, frame failed, and fabric of the shelter collapsed. In operation, did I shield too much, or did my weakness bring you strength? Seasons will tell if the umbrella huddle and parasol parenthood prepared you for all of us. That's that. Thank you. Thank you. Went a little bit roboty, but but we got we got it we got it. So that's 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 cool. I hope your girls do all right in the A levels. Yeah. They presume you're going to be graded on past results, but... Yeah, so I don't know whether the in-between predicted and mocks will be best, or yeah. who knows. hope it goes well anyway. Yeah, because they're saying now they can maybe do the mock, resit later on, but they had to hand the books back in, in about April, so... <laughs> what do you do? Oh, it sounds like one of those brilliantly thought through ideas by uh, Absolutely. government. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, well, let's, hopefully, yeah. We, we, I'm sure we all hope that they, uh, they do really well and uh, get the results they want. So. Thank you. Finola, do you have another one? I have a short one. Okay, cool. No introduction. Acrobat. I teeter downhill nearly head over heels, tipped by your tumbling weight. No safety net, Glasgow spreads below. The lollipop lady opens arms wide. 
the steep streets a tightrope. Two hearts dance on this high wire. My blood a memory in your veins. Upright, uptight, I fight gravity's pull. Coiled, you wrestle the waxing moon. On tiptoe, I balance our hopes. Let love steady our way. I wrote that when I was pregnant on the, one of the steepest streets in Glasgow. So every every time I left the house, it was a risk. <laughs> wow, that was lovely. That was great. Uh, Susan, do you have another one before you uh, have to dash off? No, no. Well, uh, thank you for joining us from the uh, the campsite. Whereabouts are you on your um, on your holiday? Right beside Oxenholm Station, there's a campsite there, the Station Inn, uh, which is really, really good. Just, it's suddenly become quite energetically loud here, so uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> distracting and uh, I can't really see any, hear anything. Um, no, but it's it's been lovely and it's obviously scorching. Uh, amazing thunderstorms the other night, so that was that was fun in the tent. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's all good stuff. That's great. Well. Thank you for, for joining us from your uh, from your holiday. So uh, that's great. No problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. When we tune when we tune out, we'll, we can sign back in and do do another part. Uh, just use the same login details. Um, but yeah, we've only got a couple of minutes, and um, uh, I was going to ask Fernando Smith, but we cut his song off the a uh, couple of months back, and he, he hasn't forgiven me for when the song got cut. In uh, it's cut always off. better. Cut off at the end. No, no that's not always true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish at endings. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. So we'll, we'll yeah. But, but are you keeping all well? Uh, well, Mark, you you keeping all right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm three weeks into into semi retirement, so I'm very well. <laughs> wow, well, semi retirement. <laughs> good, good, good. Does that mean you suddenly have loads of other projects you never knew that you um were going to have to work you know, on? Bill amazing what comes out of the woodwork and um, I'm having to turn things away now and, and sort of because because I want to watch daytime telly as well. <laughs> <laughs> I want no. to know more about the tarn and the rocks that you posted about the other day in the south of the county, um, the bouldering, but not here. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll have to message oh, yeah. you or something. Oh, you can tell it in the next section and I'll catch up with it on Facebook. I'll just rename. I've got a poem called Durham Cathedral. I'll just rename it "Some Big in Town." <laughs> yeah, do that. However, though. <laughs> yes, you have to you have to send me the grid references to uh, "Some Big in Town." Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Just to, just to the uh, the west east of east of Orton. Yeah, it's a lovely place, and it's 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 where the sort of the grit stone meets the limestone. So there's lots of swallow holes and yeah. um, interest underground. It's a it's a it's a wonderful place and, and a wonderful 360 degree view of everything in all the world ever. <laughs> <laughs> everything. So go, wow. go, go right now and stand up and wait for the thunder and lightning to strike. I, I got hit by lightning once. I could tell you that in the second half. <sighs> didn't do you any harm though. <laughs> I, I have you have any problems with hair static? You come to me. I'm your man. <laughs> I don't have hair problems with it, anything to do with hair. <laughs> as soon as I open mouth, I knew that. <laughs> if you were struck by lightning, I think that starts to explain quite a lot. Behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I was. I was a. Uh, 18, about 18 I think I was, um, and it, it was, uh, I'd had an experience, no I had an experience that evening, it was at Wasdale, with uh, an older woman from Oldham who had big hands, <laughs> and I think it was a lightning what done me in, <laughs> I should really say no more. Fair enough. Yeah, more, more than enough I think there. However, here's a poem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the boy stood on the burning deck from when Saul had fled, the idiot. That's an old uh, Spike Milligan poem, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the old ones are the best, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I was down at the um, the studio at Morland today. Oh, uh, yeah. Because putting together the exhibition for the um, lockdown book. Oh yeah. Um, so this, the exhibition isn't up yet. I think it starts on Saturday, but so it was worth um, having a look at. And there was a Helen Milliken from BBC Cumbria. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know she was well. yeah, she was interviewing people. So I think that goes out. I think the interview she's doing, the, the piece she's doing uh, is on Monday night, sort of eight-ish, seven, eight o'clock, something like that, she was saying. Uh, so it was a really positive piece, I think, you know, it was, it was a really positive uh, uh, interview meeting with several people. So there's, when, when it's open, it's an exhibition, is it, Mark? It's an exhibition, yeah, what they've done is they've taken the, um, the pages from the book and blown them up. And so there's an exhibition of that. And then I think this, not this, uh, not this coming weekend, the weekend after, I think it is, They've got various sort of performances and what have you going on and talks going on on the Saturday and Sunday. It'll be on the, I guess it'll be on the Studio Mall and website. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, it was nice. It's, it's a nice space. It's only the second time I've been and I only live a mile away. Uh, but it is, it, it's a really nice space. And the woman there, Kate, seemed uh, uh, a really, really, really good woman, a really good person. Whereabouts is it? It's yeah. in, right in the centre of Moorland, which is sort of halfway between Shap and Penrith. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so you can go there, you can go to the ice cream factory nearby and then just stay in the pub. Uh, you could go to the pub at King's Meebun, um, which I believe was is called King's Meebun as opposed to Maud's Meebun because of the the side the different communities fought in in the uh, the Civil War. No, in, not in the Civil in, yeah, in the Roundhead the, the war. Yeah. And, and um, uh, obviously the King's Meebun, Meebun supported the King and so, um, no, supported the Roundheads. So the King took it off them. Whereas Maud's Meebun were the royalists and so they were able to remain as Maud's yeah. Meebun. Mm. Um, yeah, the sycophantic bastards. Um, so there you have it. <laughs> History, <laughs> lightning, oldham <laughs> sex. <laughs> what more do you want? I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that lightning did no trouble to you whatsoever. <laughs> You should do tours around Cumbria. <laughs> Little guided tours. But no comes. I don't I don't broadcast them though. I just tell them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to myself for a bit and then go on. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Cool. Okie dokie. Where did we get to? Um Josephine, have you have you got a piece? Yeah. I found something. Um it's um as people were reading weather-related um, poems, um, I've got this poem that I wrote. You know, uh, it's, I've only got it handwritten. It's um, in a in a workshop recently. So it rained all through the night. I opened the door. The dogs didn't want to go out, though the pools gathered by gravity. Though later I went and pushed open the gate and let it all swoosh through, washing the pine needles and fluffs of brown paper, blown by the wind and caught on the wire netting, shaken and fragmented by the wind, down the steps to the door. They followed me, browned their feet in the mud as I splashed at the side of the road under the trees, lit up by the sun, as it angled around, as if it were trying to find a good view of the house. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you very much. Fernando Smith. Do you have something to share with us? No. Um, choices. 
Um, I tried to eat the cake and the cherry. I already had the cake and a bowl full of fruit on my table and I was able to reach the tree, warm the oven, access the pantry and much of the garden. Durham Cathedral. Climbing high, edging upwards on the twisting spine of this cathedral, commissioned by men with great ambition, built by men with strong arms and passion, ascended by a man with a little pink ticket. Um, what's our audience like? Is, is, are we, are, 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 this is rude. Is that permissible? Or? Yes, go for it. Yeah, go for it. it I mean, it's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's a true story. And it's called First Curse. And it happened in a back street in Bury, just north of Manchester. And um, there was me and Ronnie Kershaw, who I fell out with when I found out his real name, his full name was Ronald William Kershaw. I was about nine or ten and we dared each other to swear. And uh, we checked around and sort of looked, is anybody about? And there was just a pack of dogs because in those days, there's always seemed to be packs of dogs running riot, particularly in summer and uh, in the back streets of, of Bowie. And, um, uh, and, 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 and so, so this is what happened. So I apologize completely. And if you want to switch me off afterwards, that's fine. I'll say it now, here it comes. Go on then, I'm going to say it. I'm ready, are you ready? Yeah, we're ready, go on then, say it, say it, say it now, say it now. All right, hey, promise not to tell anyone. I'm only saying it, we promise, go on, say it. Okay, here it comes, go on. I was just about to go on, go on. Don't fucking tell me what to do. Was that it then? No, I didn't mean to say that. You just made me say that. Well, just say it now. Bloody fucking cunt bastard shitter. Bloody cunt fucking cunt bastard shitter. Bloody fucking cunt bastard shitter. You forgot the other one. Oh, and twat too. Oh, I'll just do one more before I get chucked off. This will be nice. Um. This is this is um, this was written at um, Tom Fox Crag, which is uh, up in Eskdale. It's very difficult to get to uh, for the Lake District. It's one of the longer walks, and um, Eskdale, of course, is a, is a, is a it was probably my favourite part of the Lake District. It's the, the closest we get to proper mountain scenery, alpine scenery in the lakes. I think in many ways, and um, this is called Tom Fox is singing. In the highlands, the poems breathe regret, the winds thrash poor attitudes. The sun makes silhouettes of us, now finding respite among the bracken. A flash of freedom in the highlands, where I wandered here to feel. England escaping itself, its flustered politics left by the road. In the highlands, I listened to the inner language, in the highlands I lay on the bank with waters, untroubled by destiny. In the highlands I came to dream of you and the thousand lives of us. Was it hips or soul that ached by the great moss and bore witness above this little Eden? The day passing slowly, a gloved hand closing my eyelids, the raven Scorching my ear, midges biting at my neck. Really good. Oh, yeah. I must say, you knew a lot of words when you were 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was great. Good, good, good.
Um, are we up for doing one more circuit? Does that sound okay? Okay. All right. Been heckled by my own technology. Okay. Um, yeah, we've been talking about the, the thunderstorms and the, and the weather and things a bit, and this is this one's called sun. Warmth hangs in the thick air. Lazy, hazy heat hanging, waiting. In no mood to leave quickly. No haste required. A murky grey-blue smear holds the speckled disc of gold up high. It radiates light, warmth, and life-giving magic. The fuel behind photosynthesis, the ultimate solar cell technology. And with no off switch, it turns soil to sand, dirt to dust. Mud dries solid, cracks reach out across the land. Greenery fades, yellows appear, browning leaves, stems, grasses, robbed of life-giving H2O. Baked, burned, scorched and turned, into ashes, if unchecked. No queen to King's Rook fall. Rain clouds are banished, and life could slowly vanish if sustenance becomes scarce. Plants fail, water sources dry up, and our planet faces problems on the grandest of scales. Not the planet per se, but all the life living upon it. We don't matter in geological time. Playing the long game is our precious world, our paradise, this third rock from the sun. That's that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. George, do you have another one for us? Yeah, no, sorry. Yes, of course, Phil. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully self-explanatory. So this is the view from my study, Eldersley Golf Course. Outside the window, the golf course stretches to clouded skies. Beyond the high hedge and the road, my past and present lies. For in my youth, I strode those 18 holes, driving wildly into trees and rough and out of bounds and cursing mildly. In those far off days, my curses did not carry the venom they burden now, when I struggle in mire and daily tedium. No longer risk the driver seeking glory to fly, to win a wedge from the tattered trolley to chip through rough and whin. Now my shots are only in the mind's recall of glory or defeat. The course is nearly finished, and my score defies the conceit which in those far off days thought glory would be found. Riches, fame, a name carried by children running round. Such happy expectations seem wanton in the winter light as I gaze on those bare trees fading into night. That was great, but only mild cursing because the bar has been set quite high now. <laughs> Good stuff. Good, good, good. Uh, Richard, do you have another? Uh, yes, I do. Um, this one's called Woodbines and Concubines. And it's part of a series of what I call rhyming couplets that I did once. Uh, but I remember I had an, a great uncle who was gassed in the trenches in the First World War. And he used to chain smoke woodbine cigarettes, which never seemed to do him a lot of good, obviously. <laughs> and I do remember he had a very bad hacking smokers cough and probably died a lot earlier than he should have done but it certainly put me off taking up smoking anyway right uh, woodbines and concubines woodbines and concubines so many bad things to make you feel good tall pines and porcupines flora and fauna it's deep in the blood tin tacks and aching backs too many bad things can hurt you a lot 
train tracks and sealing wax, journeys and letters, perk you up a jot. Good wines and evil signs, so many bad things that look fine to start. Great times and wedding chimes, don't follow your head but go with your heart. Thin macs and smoking hacks, so many bad things when you look about. Cash stacks and morals lax, leave your mistress and put the woodbine out. Thank you. <laughs> The, the, there was a there was a man that I was raised in a corner shop, and we used to sell capstan full strength of woodbines and things like that, yeah. and part drive and what have you. And um, there was an old bloke who used to come in a couple of yeah. times a week and buy his woodbines for the week, and he always also used to buy American tan tights, which looking back I was uh, is very suspicious. <laughs> Maybe he used to smoke them for the woodbines. He was tan tied. <laughs> I don't know how this works. Yeah. The mind boggles. <laughs> uh, Josephine, do you have another or? These are um, three very little poems that I wrote for an Alston currency. They were actually printed on the banknotes. Uh, three different um, uh, denominations of currency. Bolt, a hundred. A lot. Low, a nut, a colt, salt, a poet, a bot, court. Ginnel, twenty. Gin the niggle a tail, gin the hankle a ball, gin the nibble a quill, or shall we tell them all? Gin the stiggle a spell, gin the brattle a wall, gin the turn wall an owl, or is there a story to tell? Gin the petal a fall, gin the startle a well, gin the silly fall so pale, let riddle the hounds of hell. Thicket, ten. Forget the cuppa, let leaflet. Would you like a snack or a snicket? A pack or a picket? A snick or a snippet? A snack or a light gate? A trick or a ticket? A lickety split wicket? Or is that not cricket? Desire path or sleek it? A sticker or neck it? Are you open for the good and shut for the wicked in the poem of Hickmit? Or a sneak snick a snay, a snelt in the snow, a blackbird or crow, a song thrush or a swallow, a pheasant or blue tit, a grouse or a pipit, a great tit or wee bit, a doubt it or miss it? Oh, that was tremendous. Thank you very much. Fernando Smith, do you have another? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'll, um, I'll read this. This is, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm back in Bury again tonight for the third time. Um, um, and this is, this is a poem about, about uh, a girl who I was, desperately in love with when I was about 15 or 14. There's a theme going on here. I think I must be getting, it's retirement that does this, I think. It's called First, as in F-I-R-S-T, the first. <clears throat> I was thinking of you and me in that phone box by Kay Gardens. I held you in its frosty belly, trying to keep you warm, but shivering a bit in the cold northern night, kissing your neck, not waiting on a phone call, just for your mother to collect you, like treasure deposited on the sideline of a shore. We had, vin we had vinegar on our lips from John's French Fry restaurant, and a bit of Beaujolais, which I had, which I had mispronounced bourgeoisie, and which, Regardless, the waitress had brought to our table in an equal ignorance, for this was Lancashire in 1981. We didn't know about these things. I, was sure, I wasn't sure how to kiss a girl as I held you for the first time and the last time, knowing it would be the only time. I was grateful to receive the embrace 
a precious thing to recall now and then, until later it became another beautiful relic stashed inside the museum of my love. <clears throat> very poignant, very poignant that. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got one more and then we'll, we'll sort of draw things to a close, but um, it's been really good tonight. Really enjoyed it. Uh, this is one more sort of a triptych of vaguely weather related um, ones. This is rain. Oh no, it's raining. I say cherish the rain. Life giving droplets tumble from the clouds, bringing refreshing supplies to quench thirst of people, creatures, and plants. Without the tumbling spots of moisture, liquid, splish, splashing, lashing down steer rods, we are lost. We need the transparent blobs that race each other to the bottom of the window. Trickling brooks need to become gurgling streams. Rivers must cover up their bare shingle, and hills require white roaring gills refilled. Waterfalls gush with immense force. The power of nature so clearly on show, as glistening glass-like curtains tumble. White frothing bubbles billow and swirl, an unstoppable roaring beast fills the air with a cacophony of noise. Shades of green can again be seen as grassy hills, fields, leaves and trees find new cause to survive and thrive. And then we hope it'll remember to stop. A swollen river is a dangerous thing in more ways than one. All in moderation, thank you. A little bit of sun, a little bit of rain. We are, as it always has been, at the mercy of the celestial ruler's reign. And that's that. Okay. Well, thank you all for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, can we just give everyone who read a, round, a little round of applause? Is that, is that okay? Yeah, all good stuff. Everybody who listened, so thank you all for listening as well, very patiently. And um, <laughs> thank you for joining in. So yeah, thank you all for being in the audience as well. And um, hopefully see you again next time. Yeah. But, yeah. Good stuff. Good. Take care, everyone. Take care. We'll see you again. Right. Bye. 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 Have a safe trip home. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Take care.